Aloha, everyone. I'm Ermina Van Dyken, MD from Out of the Doldrums. I'm a surgeon by trade, but my true passion is helping people just like you obtain optimum health. I happen to be one of those frontline healthcare workers. With SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19 turning the entire world upside down, we as human beings have to do everything we possibly can to prevent its spread. We talk a lot about proper hand washing, respiratory etiquette, physical distancing, and other methods to slow the spread of this virus down. By the way, quick side note, I prefer the term physical distancing compared to social distancing. I think it's vitally important that we make the distinction. Social distancing implies becoming socially isolated. This will become dangerous to our psychological health and well-being over the long run. What we really need to be doing is be physically isolated, yet keep our social networks together and stronger than ever by using technology and other creative means. What I'm gonna talk about now is a bit controversial, but I feel there's enough data to support the claims that I'm making. The question I wanna ask is very simple. What if everybody in the world wore a mask? Could we slow down the spread of COVID-19? Let me start by emphasizing that currently there is a severe shortage of masks across the globe. Us on the front lines in the healthcare profession, the doctors, the nurses, the respiratory therapists, and other healthcare providers desperately need personal protective equipment, also known as PPE. This means we need surgical masks, as well as N95 masks, gowns, and eye protection. This is a separate issue and it is very serious. In an ideal world, it would be really nice to have the resources to give every human being on this planet a mask, whether it's a surgical mask or a cloth mask or an N95. I know that's not ever going to happen, but we can be creative and make homemade masks for non-medical people to wear. Please everybody, don't hoard desperately needed PPE for your own use. The best way to stop the spread of COVID-19 is to donate that stash to your local hospital so they can provide their frontline workers like me and patients with adequate protection. If your doctors and nurses are sick because they had no PPE and they contracted COVID-19, there will be no one left to take care of you, even though you hoarded all those masks. So don't do it. And if you're a hoarder, shame on you. That being said, let's talk about masks. Why do we wear them? Is there any data behind wearing them? The Center for Disease Control, or CDC, currently recommends taking droplet precautions, meaning wearing a surgical mask when dealing with known COVID-19 patients. One exception to this is if you're participating in procedures that could cause aerosolization of the virus, then you wear the N95 mask. They then recommend that if there are no masks available, Healthcare providers should wear scarfs or bandanas over their mouth and nose for protection. Let me say that again, scarfs and bandanas. Like this CDC? This is the current state of healthcare in the United States. One of the most prosperous nations in the world. America is now in crisis mode. Contrast that to China. In Wuhan, the Chinese were able to control the virus spread using many mechanisms, including strict lockdown and having healthcare workers housed away from their families. Unfortunately, in the beginning, China saw many of their healthcare workers die from COVID-19 before they figured out how the virus was transmitted and how to properly equip their staff. Once they had it figured out though, healthcare workers wore full body gear, including head coverings, goggles, N95 masks, and hazmat style suits. They then had zero cases of transmission, zero from patient to healthcare worker after taking that approach. Contrast that to Italy and the United States where we're seeing a high rate of transmission to healthcare workers. In Italy, doctors and other healthcare professionals account for about 12% of all COVID patients. And at just four Boston hospitals over this last weekend, over 150 healthcare workers have tested positive for COVID-19. What type of PPE were they wearing? Likely surgical masks or even potentially none because they were out. We're finding from South Korean data that about 30% of people with COVID-19 are asymptomatic. That means they have no symptoms at all. If you turn your attention to Iceland, where they do some of the most widespread testing in the world, an estimated 50% of positive people have no symptoms. Usually, these are our younger people and it's these people that are thought to be spreading the virus. They're out and about moving around because they feel fine and they have no symptoms whatsoever. Let's think about this again for a second. If 30 to 50% of healthcare workers that are infected don't show any symptoms, 
then they're out there infecting their colleagues and their patients if they're not wearing a mask 100% of the time. It's important for the safety of everyone that masks are worn, especially in a healthcare setting. What if these asymptomatic people were wearing masks and practicing all the other things like physical distancing, proper hand hygiene, cough and sneeze etiquette? If you look at places like Japan, Taiwan, South Korea, and Hong Kong, even before this pandemic, these places regularly wore masks. It's common to see widespread mask usage on the subways, trains, and busy streets. Now, in those areas, measures are in place to recommend or require everyone wear masks. Yes, other containment measures were in place as well, but the spread of the disease was much slower when compared to places like Europe and the US. It's time for us to educate everyone on alternative ways to protect their face, in addition to other measures like hand washing and physical distancing. This means all of you asymptomatic people out there as well. Even healthy people cough or sneeze on a daily basis. Think about it. When you're just having a conversation with someone and they're telling you something really exciting, how many times have you had that person accidentally spit on your face? I mean, it happens, right? Droplet spread. So let's look at some case studies and their response to COVID-19. Taiwan, Hong Kong, and the Czech Republic. Taiwan, it's 81 miles off the coast of mainland China. It was expected to have the second highest number of cases of coronavirus because of its proximity and the number of direct flights to and from China. Taiwan has had experience with diseases like COVID-19. They had a severe outbreak of the SARS virus in 2004. After that, they refined their response and became prepared. At the start of COVID-19, Taiwan quickly mobilized and instituted specific approaches to protect public health. One of the things they did was they took an active role in resource allocation. They quickly ramped up mask production to 100 million masks per day, and they had a huge stockpile of both surgical masks and N95s. The last thing they did was set a price for masks. So there was no price gouging, unlike what's happening in Europe and the US today. They had daily press briefings where they reviewed when and where to wear a mask, the importance of hand washing, the dangers of hoarding masks, they advised the general public to wear masks, which they did, and they even rationed them to three masks per week. Let's look at the second example, Hong Kong. Hong Kong also was hit hard by the SARS outbreak in 2004. It's a similar story. Meticulous hand hygiene and mask wearing was advised. Lastly, let's look at the Czech Republic. This is an interesting example because it's a Western country. With the help of social media influencers and the hashtag masks for all, they were able to change the culture in their country in regards to mask wearing. It began like any typical Western country. Wearing a mask is uncommon and kind of stigmatized, reserved for sick people. They started a campaign with a slogan, your mask protects me, my mask protects you. Everybody started sewing masks at home. The country created these things called mask trees where multiple bright masks were hanging free for the taking to anybody who needed one. Within days, the culture was changed. It became compulsory or required to wear a mask when leaving the house. And nowadays, socially, it's frowned upon not to wear a mask when you're out and about. If you look at the rate of new cases in Czech Republic versus other countries like Italy or the US, it appears that this has been flattening the curve. So let's ask a fundamental question. Are cloth masks even effective in preventing the spread of the coronavirus? Well, let's back up and be clear. Nothing is 100% effective. Even an N95 mask only filters 95% of particles larger than 0.1 microns in size. This study published in July 2013 looked at homemade masks and whether they would protect in an influenza pandemic. They looked at masks made from different materials and they then looked at how efficient they were at filtering out small particles. They compared materials like a cotton t-shirt, a tea towel, a scarf, and a vacuum cleaner bag to a surgical mask. They found that both the surgical mask and the homemade mask reduced the number of droplets expelled when coughing. They concluded that any material can provide a physical barrier to infection, but they emphasize that it's better if the mask fits well around the nose and the mouth, and it's better if the mask is made from a material that filters smaller particles better, like tea towels. The authors did raise concern though that a homemade mask would provide a false sense of security. This is important. We need to make sure we continue to practice the other measures of decreasing infection spread, like frequent and meticulous hand washing, respiratory etiquette, and physical distancing. 
We cannot wear a mask and then be reckless with the other factors. That does us no good. There's also some concern with cloth masks. When wearing these masks for long periods of time, moisture builds up. Once moisture builds up in them, they don't filter quite as well and they actually result in an increased risk of infection. But the thing is, these studies were comparing a cloth mask to a surgical mask, not comparing a cloth mask to wearing nothing. Wearing your mask properly is of critical importance. The World Health Organization clearly states, a mask alone will not protect you. I completely agree. Other measures need to be adopted, like hand hygiene, especially before touching your eyes, your nose, or your mouth. Proper hand hygiene is without a doubt the single most important measure to reduce the spread of coronavirus. But that's not a reason not to wear a mask. Even if a mask is 70% effective at filtering out infectious particles, it's better than nothing. Not recommending a mask, even a homemade one, because they're not 100% effective, is the equivalent of not recommending condoms because they're not 100% effective in preventing pregnancy or blocking STDs. Or the equivalent of not recommending wearing your seatbelt because it doesn't save 100% of lives. It just doesn't make sense. A little bit is better than nothing. That being said, why are very few people in Western countries wearing masks? I think a lot of it is cultural. People in places like Hong Kong, they wear masks as a courtesy to protect other people from their respiratory secretions. In westernized countries like the US, masks are used to cover the mouth of sick people to prevent infectious droplets from spreading. In a way, Western countries create a stigma when it comes to mask wearing. Masks only for the sick. We need to end that stigma. There's so many people in the world today that are at high risk for contracting COVID-19. These people should be wearing masks. Another group of people who should be wearing masks are people with COVID-19. But in addition to that, if 30 to 50% of people who have COVID-19 have no symptoms, how do we spot that group of people? The truth of the matter is, we'll never know who those people are. We all should just be wearing masks to prevent the possibility of us being one of those 30% that's shedding virus and spreading it to the vulnerable people. If you don't have a mask, make your own. There's plenty of DIY videos online of people fashioning masks from all sorts of things, even from paper towels and rubber bands. By the way, the paper towel and rubber band mask was tested in Hong Kong by the University of Hong Kong. It was found to have 80 to 90% the function of a regular surgical mask in terms of filtration of aerosol and droplets. I've linked a video below describing how to make that mask. Russell, the other part of Out of the Doldrums, made his own video on how to make a filter mask, a complex surgical filter mask. That's what I'm gonna be wearing if I don't have anything else to wear. Not wearing a mask in the US is cultural. But here's the thing, culture can change. Look at the Czech Republic. They went from look at that idiot wearing the mask to look at that idiot not wearing the mask in a matter of days. It can be done. So to reemphasize, Homemade masks, they're not a substitute for medical grade surgical masks. That being said, they're better than nothing. And given the global shortage of masks, I think it's a really good idea that everybody wear a mask regardless of whether they're well or sick. Remember, a mask alone will not protect you, but when used in combination with proper hand hygiene and other tactics like respiratory etiquette, physical distancing, it should help slow down the spread of COVID-19. At the end of the day, a universal mask policy will slow down the spread of coronavirus throughout the world. The Czech Republic is a perfect example of this. COVID-19 has turned the world entirely upside down. Not much is the same anymore. Things change, we've seen them change on a day-to-day -day basis. Maybe one thing that should also change is our opinions about mask wearing. Many of us in the world are already being selfless in the fact that we are staying at home under lockdown. Thank you. Let's extend that selfless attitude towards adopting mask wearing. Let's wear masks to protect others. If we do that, maybe others will wear masks to protect you. So there you have it. I'm super curious to know what you all think about everyone wearing masks. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, stay healthy everybody, stay well, and aloha.